Welcome back, you big fucking nerds. <laughs> it's been a hot minute since we've done one of these Ultimate Collection vidges. And that's because I needed the key item in this video back. I'd lent it out. Had to get it back, got it back. So here we go. Also, before we start, if you want to deep dive into this bad boy and the collector's edition of Metal Gear Solid 5, they have their own videos, which I will link below. Let's get into it. So first up is one of the uh, the weird little nuggets of the collection that I didn't even know existed for the longest time. Metal Gear Solid 3 DS. <laughs> I had no idea it was a thing. Uh, I guess it's a good thing because there's more people with DS's than Vita's, so if you wanted to play it for, for, portably, portably, this is the way to go. Uh, it is a little unwieldy, and the 3D effects hurt my eyes a lot, so I had to turn that off right away. And the graphics look a bit weird. I don't know whether they rebuilt it from the ground up or what. I, again, I know next to nothing about it. Uh, it's supposed to be better when you have the Circle Pad Pro because, of course, Nintendo. It says it's got immersive controls, but then it also says that it's best if you buy the Circle Pad Pro. So I don't have a Circle Pad Pro. I don't even have a DS. I was very lucky that a friend of mine had one he could lend me. And uh, yeah, it's it, it totally works. I got up to the fear. The fear! The fear! The fear! And that's where my kind of patience <laughs> ran out. But I think it's uh, a cool little, it is a cool little just like collector's thing. Like it's definitely not one that I think is essential unless you only have a DS for some reason in 2021. <laughs> but yeah, you know, if you want to play it a different way, you have a 3DS knocking about, you find it a decent price, you might be going on holiday or whatever. Unlikely if you live in the UK at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it is cool. I just, just the controls really, you know, cause obviously the DS has just one joystick so it's like playing a PSP and you have to get that peripheral to get the best out of it is a little bit of a, a little bit of a downside but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I've got it and it will stay on my shelf half completed till the end of time now this this is where the fun begins this is where it gets to, it starts to get a little tasty there was a ton of these HD collection style things released around the time this is from 2012 2012 uh, there was a Splinter Cell one, there was a Devil May Cry one, Silent Hill, uh, Zone of the Enders. What else was there? There was tons of, there was tons of them. I think they did Shadow of the Colossus under the guise of Classic HD. Just a, just a, an absolute a plethora of these bad boys. And I, bought, I, I got this day one. And it holds up. It really is an improvement. I went on 3 recently just to have a look. Because last time I played 3 was on PlayStation Now, and it looks so good. Even though it's the same version, it was kind of watered down. It looks awesome. I just went into like the camo viewer and like zoomed in on his face. It it really is an improvement on the OG one. And you actually get five games in this because it's the uh, substance version of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. Without the skateboarding, as we discussed in a lot of the other videos. But it's the subsistence version of Metal Gear Solid 3, so you get Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake built in. And Peace Walk, so you get five games in one, and it is definitely worth a shot. Uh, it's better, I suppose, if you have it on Xbox 360, because you can play it all the way up to the current generation. PlayStation be lacking with uh, a lot of backwards compatibility stuff. But uh, if you can get a hold of this, you do have a PS3 or, like, say, an Xbox, this is a great place to start, because chronologically, third one is the first one and yeah i agree really, yeah this is this is a, this is a no-brainer for anyone really just a fan of the series who wants to go back to it or someone looking to start it's really 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 good and it looks nice on the shelf next to all the other hd collections <laughs> now even though i've got the special edition of this and it's done like a star wars prequel thing where people have come around to it a lot recently i still consider this sort of like a weird a weird side game and it is but it's become like it's had a real renaissance recently of like people being like this was actually really good this was really good and it is really good it's very different i preferred the original concept where it was uh raiden going from metal gear solid 2 to metal gear solid 4 how he became the cyborg ninja you can even tell that he's like proto form 
Raiden on the cover. And the cut at will stuff, you're just slicing and dicing through everything. And how can we forget the memes? <laughs> There's so many memes come out of this. Not even just within like the Metal Gear community, but just, just in general, you just see this kind of slapped onto everything because memes in the traditional sense are mentioned in this, which is like an ideology that is passed on generationally. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good. it is good. Uh, it has network features for some reason. I don't remember any online stuff with this, in, unless it means the DLC. Uh, as we looked at with the deep dive unboxing, you do get to play as Cyborg Ninja. If you got this little DLC, and I got the white armor one. Yeah, I like it. I do like it. I recently bought it on Steam. I'll probably check it out again on there. I hope it runs well. Some, some of those PC ports from that time were really bad. I'm looking at you, all the Arkham games. And I don't think it's essential, uh, with it being set after 4, and I think it's can canonicity is up for debate, but it, it's a fun time. I don't even think you really need to get into Metal Gear as a whole to play Rising. You know, if you like your Bayonettas, your Devil May Cries, you're going to be all over this. All over it. It is a good game. It isn't the best game, but it's a good game. It's worth the time. This is it. This is the Holy Grail. This is all you ever need. If you have a passing interest in this series, whether you're a diehard or a casual fan, you will never need to buy another Metal Gear anything <laughs> if you want realistically the full story, because 5 doesn't do a lot to change anything. If you want the full story, you want this big chunky box. Uh, it is becoming increasingly difficult to get a copy of this with good reason. It has got, it's got it all. It's got it all. And this is what I was waiting uh, to get back. I'd lent this out because this is the crux of this video. This is the ultimate collection. It's, uh, it is called the Legacy Collection 1987 to 2012. And my goodness, do you get a lot in this? But let's let's start with here first you get this art book uh yoji shinkawa on the cover because of course he is and you get artwork ranging from well brand new stuff that was designed for this a history of the series and its releases from 98 all the way through and there's so much, like, it's not a small book. Like, it's a small physical book to hold, but it's thick, man. And it goes all the way up to the release of Ground Zeroes. Tons of posters, concept art, promotional material. It is very comprehensive. And if you, obviously, you are interested, if you're probably watching this video, to be honest, but if you are interested in the history of, like, the advertising and stuff, like, look at that poster with the snake and the map. I love that. Yeah, you know, concept art, uh, ray designs, posters. It's just so good. Ah! Let's get into the meat. So it's got a just a standard PS PS3 case. Inside, you get a load of codes. You get a load of controls for all the games. You get two discs, the HD collection, and Metal Gear Solid 4. But that ain't it. There's a little bit more to it. Let's have a look. So you get Metal Gear Solid 4 as is on its own disc. And you get the HD collection on a separate disc. So you get everything we got in the HD collection. Plus downloads for Metal Gear Solid Special Missions, 300 VR missions. Why? 300 VR missions. Why? Um, but you also get OG Metal Gear Solid. But for me, as you know, if you've probably been watching any of these videos, Ashley Wood Time, baby! The digital graphic novel of Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, fully voiced and soundtracked. You can watch them like films. And they're not short. They're about, and the first one's about an hour and a half. I think the second one's two hours. They are fucking sit down and watch them films. 
fully animated, fully voice casted, with most of the original voice cast. There is a couple of uh, variations, like Grey Fox isn't the original Grey Fox voice. But other than that, it is a really good way for someone perhaps who doesn't want to play the games to uh, get the story. And it's just everything. Ah, it's... Ah, I love it so much. Right, that's enough of that. We'll be here all day. We'll just watch this. <laughs> but yeah, this essential purchase. It is the only place where you can play the majority of the core series in one place. And unfortunately, it is on an aging console. They really need to get their shit together and really re-release this with five. Obviously, the definitive edition of five included in this, possibly with Rising as well, and release that on next-gen consoles. People will buy this. I will buy this. A lot of people, I assume, watching this video will buy this. This is it. I love this so much. And we kind of peaked here in the video. There is nothing really that's going to top this. God damn, I love it so much. God damn. This almost feels a little uh, anticlimactic after the <laughs> hype of the last one. Uh, I remember buying this the same day as the Final Fantasy X HD remaster. And this, oh man, this was a controversial game when it came out because you, you you can complete this in, I think, about 20 minutes if you're really good. Don't come at me with the, well, there's extra missions. There's, there's a total of nine extra missions, actually. This was a full price game when it came out, and it is a tech demo. It's a damn good tech demo. Well, that's what it is. And uh, its plus sides are it probably affects the story more than uh, Phantom Pain does. But that's about it. It, I enjoy it. It is, it is fun, but only for so long. I, I completed it 100% just because I'm a super simp for the series. I got it on PS4 digitally, and then they released it for free on PS Plus, like they did with the Phantom Pain. It is good, but it, it, it definitely the price point and the precedent it kind of set for companies releasing games a little piece at a time a little piece at a time for a full price game Final Fantasy X Remaster for example but Final Fantasy X uh, Final Fantasy X Final Fantasy VII Remaster I mean sorry that's like a full 40 hour game this is not even if you 100% this you, you're only just pushing 40 hours I feel especially if you're any good at it funny one it is a funny one like it, it, you look at this it looks legit and the way it doesn't say part one or anything the advertising it is selling it as a full game and also how lame is the cover none of that stylized you know artwork that you get traditionally with the series yeah there's a lot to to kind of dislike about this but there's also a lot to like it, it is fantastic looking that first mission where you, with the rain and all that it is good and the cutscene at the end is one of the best in the series hands down when mother base falls Absolutely phenomenal to look at, but yeah, it's a it's a little. It's, I think it's still contentious with a lot of people, and rightly so. And these two, we can double whammy. This is the standard edition of the Phantom Pain that I got with the collector's edition, hence the not to be sold separately bit. And you got this steel book with that, and inside there's room for two discs. I keep my collector's uh, collector's edition disc inside with the true ending oh my god i wish they'd release that true ending <laughs> that's a dlc i'd buy it to this day but you can put ground zeros and the phantom pain in one nice neat steelbook and that's cool 
not really much to say about this otherwise. Uh, like I said comprehensively, we did a lot on my opinions on 5 and what was included in that box. Go check that video out for a little bit more in detail. The fourth disc in this video <laughs> is to do... Fifth disc, really, if you include the, the collector's uh, Blu-ray of Metal Gear Solid 5. But this has Ground Zeroes, Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Online, and all the DLCs in it. And this is the this is the version you should be buying. This is the version you should be buying, especially at, at, you know at the time this is coming out. It's got it all. You can just do it in one long slog. One after the other. It's got Vita support for some reason. I have no idea what that is in relation to. And the cover though, the cover's closer to what I'd expect from the series. It's got that kind of 80s action poster thing, which obviously Snake uh, is based on a ton of 80s action stars, Kurt Russell, most famously. Uh, yeah, I really love that cover. I think that's a great poster. And yeah, this is this is the one you should be buying. I think this is um, this is this is the version I've got on Steam as well. So this is what I'll be playing if I ever play it again on PC. I don't think I want to do another PS4 playthrough because I've done so much. I got the Platinum on it. To start again with the way that it's structured with the game saves, you'd have to just delete it. You can't really do a new game, which is unfortunate. But yeah, this if you're going to get 5, whether it's an Xbox One, PS4, or Steam, just get the Definitive Edition. It's, it's dirt cheap now. And... You are getting a lot of hours out of it. It's bad. And there we have it. Every physical copy that I have over all platforms have now been covered. Uh, there are some that I don't have. There is the Vita HD collection. There is Ghost Babel, the Game Boy sort of games. But yeah, every, everything I physically own has now been covered. Not in, Obviously, there's plenty more like other merch we can cover, but physical boxed copies of the games. We've done it. So thank you all for sticking with this. It took me a while to get through them all. Uh, do you have any of these that I don't have? Perhaps, you know, anything like, like Ghost Babel or something? Because that is rough to try and find at a decent price let me know I, I am interested in seeing in seeing other people's collections uh, and that'll be all for today if you liked it give it a like if you disliked it please give it a dislike and if you double like please subscribe and i will see you in the next one teddy boy